Today we're going to take a look at using comparison visuals in Power BI. Now comparison visuals make it easy to compare two or more variables. They can show similarities or differences among values or parts to a whole. And we think there are some specific visualization types that really help us compare data easily. So we're gonna cover shape maps to start. We'll then move on to grouped bar charts, followed by donut charts, area charts, and we'll close on ribbon charts. But the overall goal here is to show you what each of these visualization options look like, how they work, and why they're really good for comparing values. So to start, we're actually now in the Power BI desktop application, and we're going to take a look at shape maps. The first thing you're going to want to do with shape maps is ensure that you have this setting on as a preview feature. So we're going to come to File, Options and Settings, Options, and we're going to come into Preview Features and just ensure that Shape Map Visual box is checked. If it's not, go ahead and check it. You will need to restart the application to uh, kind of have this feature kick in. But once it does, you will see a shape map as a visualization option in along with all of your other visualization types that you select from when you create reports. Now, right now we're looking at the Numero template, uh, one of many Numero templates for a shape map. What this is looking at is sales by state. So we have some order data preloaded in here uh, and just kind of helps us show these revenue numbers by state. So what we can see already with this shape map is that New York and California with this much darker blue color, we can t easily tell that they're either underperforming or overperforming compared to other states, kind of depending how we have these colors configured. But in this case, the darker the blue, the higher correlation to a higher sales number. So we can see that our highest sales are occurring in California and New York followed by Texas and Washington State. And then as we get into these even lighter uh, shades within this shape map, we're seeing you know, Nebraska not much comparatively 7,465 as compared to the sales in California with almost half a million there. So again, shape maps are a great way to quickly visualize differences or different variables in the data. Like I said, we can tell that California is performing higher than Nebraska. Now, one other thing to note is that typically the shape map is going to default to a US map, but if we come in to edit the format of these shape maps, we can change the shape from the USA states into a different country of your choosing. And that'll just ensure that you know, wherever you are, you're able to utilize this functionality. Next, we're going to take a look at grouped or clustered bar charts. So right now I'm actually looking at a standard stacked bar chart. This is also a Numero template that's available for download. And this is looking at regional performance across furniture orders, office supply orders, and technology orders. And while this is a great report, very beautiful, it is a little difficult to tell in this particular case whether or not the furniture orders are beating out the technology orders just by looking at this particular bar. I think we'd need to hover over and see that, okay, furniture in the West has 595 orders and technology in the West has 490, so okay, furniture is beating out technology. But just by looking at this quickly, we, we might not be able to tell for sure. Now, if I switch this over to a clustered bar chart, also known as a grouped bar chart, what's gonna happen is that each individual order type is going to get their own bar. And this allows us to quickly visualize that the furniture orders are actually beating out the technology orders in the West, even though they're a pretty close number to each other. So again, when we're talking about visualization options that allow for easy comparison of data, the grouped or clustered bar chart is a really great way to help differentiate between these different values and really showcase in a way that maybe, you know, a stack bar chart might not be sufficient to get that quick gauge of the eye on how these orders compare to one another. 
Next, we're moving on to the donut chart, and I have another Numero template open here, region analysis or orders by region. And donut charts are effective when you're comparing parts of a whole and you don't really need to show changes over time. You know, they can help answer the question, which categories account for the highest or lowest percentage of the total? So we can see here, if we look at the highest percentage, we have West accounting for that highest percentage of the total, uh, followed by South with that lowest percentage of the total. And we also like donut charts because this space in the middle, you know, as compared to a pie chart where that would be fully filled in, that space in the middle just provides an additional opportunity to display a valuable data point such as the total value. So here we are showcasing the total order number. That really helps us put this 32% into a context, that this is out of those 5,009 orders, 32% of those were placed in the West region. And again, we like to put these data labels on the donut chart. This can just really help clarify which is out, which region is outperforming another in the event that these numbers are pretty close, like we have here, 32% in West and 28% in East. Without those data labels, it might be hard to quickly compare and tell uh, which one is the you know, leading region as far as orders are concerned. So if you're in a situation where your donut chart does have values that are pretty close to one another, throw those data labels on as well, and leverage that hole in the middle to add some additional valuable data to, again, very quickly compare what's going on in this chart. Next, we're taking a look at area charts. And area charts actually have shading between the line value and the baseline. And so in this way, it sort of makes them an interesting mix between a line chart and a bar chart. But the shading effect really does allow users to easily discern trends in overall values over time. And I would say time is an important component to, you know, if you're considering, should I use an area chart? If you want to look at a value over time, yes, I think area charts should come into the picture. They're really good at displaying big picture changes, such as total revenue over the past 12 months. That's what we're looking at in this particular report. We have revenue by month within in this sales profile performance report. Again, this is a template within the Numero Hub that you can download. But the shading, it, it really does help showcase where our lowest sales performance occurred in the year as compared to our highest sales performance in the year, allowing for those quick uh, comparisons to be done. And we can also plot multiple variables in an area chart. I would say just ensure that they have a part to whole relationship. So in the second one, we're looking at both profit and sales. Cost might be another interesting variable to throw in here, but this really allows us to quickly tell, you know, how far above our sales was our profit across each month of the year. You know, maybe in November or in December, this is a little bit of a healthy separation that we would like to see. But here in January and February, you know, we really weren't profiting that much above the revenue coming into the organization. These area charts really do allow us to look at something very quickly over over time, and I think revenue is a really great use case for these. And finally, we're going to take a look at the ribbon chart. And ribbon charts are best used for identifying which data in a certain category has the highest rank or the largest value. And they're also really good at showing where that highest rank or largest value changes over time. So again, we're going to want to be comparing multiple variables over time if you're thinking, hey, when should I use a ribbon chart? But one of the really cool things is that it, it does help showcase where those rank changes occur. So to break that down for you, here we can see that throughout the course of the year, our consumer revenue is beating out our corporate and home office revenue. Except in the month of October, we have something interesting happen here where we can see that corporate revenue actually surpasses that uh, consumer revenue. So the ribbon, it's always going to maintain or display the order of values based on the value itself rather than the label, which is why we do see this swap occur in October and we see that corporate revenue uh, ranking as the lead for revenue for the month of October. 
And using a ribbon chart in this example, it really highlights this key insight that corporate revenue surpassed consumer revenue in October. And while this may have been, you probably could have derived this in a stacked bar chart, it wouldn't be as quick uh, of a visual if it were in a stacked bar chart as it is made so immediately clear in this ribbon where we see the purple kind of switch over on top of the blue for the first time throughout the course of this year. So again, comparing multiple values over time, use a ribbon chart, uh, but they're really great at comparing these rank or largest value changes because it is always going to order the highest value first, regardless of the category that that value falls into. That's it for today's tutorial on using comparison visuals. We hope you found this very helpful and that you're going to get out there and start using comparison visuals yourself. We also have these tips available in the Numero blog if you prefer to read through them or just revisit them in written form rather than the tutorial video. And while you're in the blog, we have a lot of other content on other visualization options that might meet your use case outside of comparison. We have information on color palettes and themed reports, on paginated and mobile reports, you name it. Check out the content in our blog. And thank you so much for tuning in today as always, we appreciate you viewing our tutorial and we'll see you next time.